Hopefully by now you have your list of muscles and we can go through these slides together. I can tell you what the correct muscles were and then talk about some of the other muscles on these cadaver images. In the practical in two weeks, you'll get questions about muscles really from two sources. You'll see some images like these from the cadavers and you'll have the models that we've been working with in class. So let's start with muscle one. Muscle one is the muscle surrounding the eye. This is the orbicularis oculi. The orbicularis oculi, uh, similar name to the muscle around the lips or the mouth, which would be the orbicularis oris, orbicularis for circular, and then uh, the second name refers to the uh, where it is. So the uh, muscle number one, the orbicularis oculi. Muscle number two, we've talked about quite a bit. This is the sternocleidomastoid, which can move the head from side to side as it tilts the chin down, or it can just uh, point the head down if they both contract. Sternocleidomastoid because it's attached to the sternum, the clavicle, the clido part, the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process back on the underside of the temporal bone. Muscle three, uh, the temporalis muscle, it's attached to the temporal bone of the skull and then comes down, inserts on the jaw. <coughs> the attachment site here is, has been cut away. These muscles have been cut away. Notice the zygomatic arch has been removed to see the underlying muscles. The temporalis muscle, when it comes down here and attaches to the lower jaw, uh, works to close the jaws. Along with the masseter, which you can't see because the masseter would have been originating on the zygomatic arch and also attaching on the uh, jaw. So muscle number three is the temporalis. Muscle number four is an abdominal muscle, uh, not one in the midline, but one off to the side, and this is the most superficial one. And when I give these images to you on the practical, I'll usually say that you're looking at a superficial or deep muscle, because sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if muscles have been cut away, although I'll try to recognize that if you can. Here we're looking at the most superficial muscle, so this is the external oblique, and underneath this you would have right, the internal oblique, and then deep to that, the transverse abdominis. And of course, the muscles running straight down the middle, separated into units by these um, strips of connective tissue here. And you can't really see the central muscle because you have this connective tissue on top of it. But if you clean this off, you'd see the rectus abdominis running right down the middle. Okay. So number four is the external oblique. Number five is the smaller of the two pectoralis muscles. This is the pectoralis minor. And notice that it's uh, attached to the ribs here and attached to the scapula. The pectoralis minor moves the scapula or can move the ribs. The pectoralis major, which would be on top of this pectoralis minor, the pectoralis major has been removed here. The pectoralis major attaches to the humerus and moves the humerus. It's the muscle that you would use when you're doing push-ups. But the pectoralis minor is either moving the scapula or if the scapular attachment becomes the origin, it can lift the ribs up when you're inhaling air. And then here you have a nice view of the rectus abdominis muscles running right down the, the middle. Muscle six. Here we have a lot of the superficial muscles on the back removed. Some of those are coming up later in the quiz. This muscle here, number six, is on the scapula, so it's attached to the edge of the scapula. And while it's running underneath the deltoid, and you can't see all of it, it's running underneath the deltoid and then attaching to the ball of the humerus. This is one of the rotator cuff muscles. Um, this is the spine of the scapula, and muscle six is below the spine, so that is the infraspinatus. Muscle six is the infraspinatus. The muscle above the scapular spine is the supraspinatus. And then the other t uh, rotator cuff muscle you can see here, the little one peeking out here, there's the teres minor. And if that's the teres minor, then the bigger one under it, which uh, attaches to the humerus, would be the teres major. So infraspinatus, supraspinatus, teres minor, teres major. All right, so number seven. Now we're looking at the superficial muscles of the back. Muscle seven, this big broad muscle in the lower back, this is the latissimus dorsi, the latissimus dorsi. And then the muscle superior to that one at the upper back, the superficial upper back muscle, that would be the trapezius. But seven is the latissimus dorsi. Eight and nine, <coughs> muscle number eight, 
is originating on the vertebral column and inserting on the scapula. This is deep to the trapezius, which has been removed. Eight is the rhomboid major, and that would make the little one just superior to it, the rhomboid minor. And muscle number nine attaches to the scapula, lifts the scapula up, that's the levator scapulae, the levator scapulae. So eight is the rhomboid major, nine is the levator scapulae. Muscles 10 and 11, now we're back to, um, well, here are the rotator cuff muscles, right? The infraspinatus we've already seen. There's the supraspinatus. There's the teres minor. Here's the rhomboid major. Here's the rhomboid minor. There's the levator scapulae. So this big functional set of muscles here, uh, moving the scapula around or moving the humerus around. Uh, and then 10, we, met, we named earlier, that's the teres major. And that's coming in here and attaching to the humerus. And then muscle 11 is on the back of the arm. This would be the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii, three heads. There's one head there, second head there, and you can see the third head poking in there. So triceps brachii. That's 10 and 11, teres major, triceps brachii. And to finish up, uh, muscle number 12. So muscle, muscle number 12 here is the um, forearm muscle involved in elbow flexion. So in the upper arm, you can't see quite so well up there, in the upper arm we have the biceps brachii, the prime mover for elbow flexion, and the brachialis, a synergist for elbow flexion. And muscle number 12 is the brachioradialis, which is another synergist for elbow flexion. It just happens to be in the, the forearm. So 12 is the brachioradialis. 13, list the synergist to 12. Well, we just mentioned two of them. The biceps brachii and the brachialis are synergists to number 12, the brachioradialis. And think of why 12 is called the brachioradialis. It's sitting on top of the radius, right? The One of the two bones in the forearm. Okay, so 12 is brachioradialis. The synergists to 12, biceps brachii and the brachialis. And then 14, list the muscle that flexes the wrist. I actually told you in lecture that I wasn't going to ask you names for those muscles. You just needed to recognize them. So this question is a little unfair. Um, but if you saw one, you can recognize them by their descriptive names. So the flexor carpi radialis or flexor carpi ulnaris. One of those two was on your list. Flexor carpi flexes the wrist. So a nice descriptive name. So that would be <coughs> a muscle that flexes the wrist. So that's it for the quiz, uh, the, the, the practice practical, and then some other muscles thrown in for review. A little bit later today, I will post a uh, short video going over the new muscles we had this week, and then you can do the assessments in the lab manual and uh, use the models, which we'll be back in 302 later this week, over the weekend, early part of next week, to come in and look at those new muscles on the models and also review all these other muscles that we've done to help you to get ready for the lab practical.